And around the world this morning, outrage in response to the killing of a British aid worker by Islamic State extremists. Today, British Prime Minister David Cameron held an emergency meeting with military and security chiefs and condemned those responsible for beheading David Haynes. They are not Muslims, they are monsters. They make no secret of their desire to do as much harm, not just in the Middle East, but to any countries or peoples who seek to stand in their way or dare to stand for values that they disagree with. And President Obama has also weighed in condemning the murder of the British aid worker. Michelle Franzen has more. David Haynes, a 44-year-old British citizen, appears to be the latest victim executed by ISIS, the Islamic extremists who now control vast swaths of Syria and Iraq. Haynes was abducted 17 months ago in Syria while working for an international aid agency, bringing food and other supplies to Syrian refugee camps just across the border with Turkey. His family in England had just issued a public plea urging his captors to contact them. Instead, the captors released a graphic video that appears to show his execution. In it, the militants warn they will execute another British hostage if Britain continues to support the U.S. air campaign striking ISIS targets in Iraq. Haynes's apparent execution follows those of two captive American journalists in the past weeks, stirring up a wave of anger that helped galvanize the Obama administration to step up the fight against the militant group. President Obama speaking about his plan to defeat ISIS in an address to the nation Wednesday night. That America will lead a broad coalition to roll back this terrorist threat. Since then, the Secretary of State has crisscrossed the Mideast, drumming up support to beat back the extremist group. Together, working to degrade and ultimately to defeat ISIL. Saturday night, British Prime Minister David Cameron called the incident an act of pure the evil. The Haynes family released a statement saying that David will be missed terribly. Michelle Franzen, ABC News, New York.